so basically, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read out like the constitution, what the constitution says about the position of social awareness. And then uh, you have to introduce yourself to say your name, your year, and then your gender pronouns. And then we're just going to ask you like, like nine questions is what we have written down right now. So yeah, does that sound good? Yeah, yeah, cool. So nine questions. Okay. Yeah. Wait, so I just say my name and gender pronouns. Is that what you said? Uh, name, year, and then gender pronouns. Okay, cool. Okay, and then y'all see the screen okay? Oh, do I see the screen okay? Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. The social awareness coordinator acts as one of the official liaisons to SAC and as such must attend all SAC meetings. If this officer is not able to make these meetings, they may appoint a proxy or request a proxy. This officer will act as the official liaison to the affiliates program of the CCC. This officer can act as a representative to various community meetings and events, including but not limited to Asian Pacific Islander Middle Eastern Desi American Research Center Planning Committee, Coalition for Critical Asian American Studies, and Associated Students Office of External Affairs. This officer, along with the community activism advocate and the gender and sexual sexuality awareness coordinator presents and facilitates discussion on current events and issues during the critical or conscious corners at GBMs, as well as workshops that affect the Filipino and UCSD communities. Excuse me. This officer may act as a representative of KP at various conferences, both at UCSD and outside of campus, including, but not limited to, University of California Student Association Congress Conference, UCSA Student of Color Conference, and UCSA Student Lobby Conference. This officer co-coordinates Filipino American History Month events, as well as the annual Filipino Awareness Week and a Panay Appreciation Dinner. This officer also in charge of facilitating the Special Studies Class Ethnic 198, or Ethnic Studies 198 Contemporary Filipino Issues During Winter Quarter, with the gender and sexuality coordinator and the community activism advocate. Cool. Okay, go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay, cool. So my name is Alex DeLeon. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. And I'm currently a sec, well, I'm a second year transfer at UC San Diego and I'm double majoring in po political science and ethnic studies. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna go into the Q and A portion now. Um, so, okay, the first question is, how do you plan on engaging the community and fostering discussion surrounding political issues? Sorry, could you repeat the question one more time? Yeah. So one more thing is, I am ADHD, so, so just yeah, yeah, yeah. context. Yeah, good. Um, how do you plan on engaging the community and fostering discussion surrounding political issues? Okay, engaging the community. I plan on holding, um, similar to the CCC, the Cross-Cultural Center, and holding workshops that are uh, particular to uh, Philippinex American and Philippinex issues. You know what I'm saying? Both Philippinex and Philippinex American, but also um, also just the Philippinex um, diaspora at large. Yeah, I plan on holding workshops that are like similar to the structure of CCC, um, in which like, if you've been to some of their workshops, it's set up kind of like where there's like a, like a power, it's like, it's like an open discussion. So it's like, it's very engaging. Yeah, just, just similar to the CCC format, yeah. Okay, thank you. The next question is, what are some precautions you would take to make sure that you create a healthy, a safe space for healthy and open discussion? How would you make sure that all members of the community feel included? I think, a, once again, I'm gonna borrow from the CCC, I think a great uh, way to ensure that is to um, is to come up with sort of like it's called like community guidelines um, at at the start of like each workshop or at each each event that we're holding together, so that we all know like the sort of vibe of the situation, and so that we're all going into it with like similar knowledge on what we're going to be talking about, and also um, and yeah, just to like just to like reiterate at the beginning uh, of each event that. Uh, that, that we're going to abide by the KP constitution, that we're gonna abide by the standards that KP holds itself to, yeah. Thank you. The next question is, how would you make more complicated topics of discussion accessible to all members in the space? 
Oh, so that's a really good question because um, I find that uh, accessibility to information is very important. Um, and when we talk about accessibility to information, it's very important to talk about intersectionality and to talk about how, um, how each person, according to their background, their, their lives, like th their walk of life, is going to approach information differently. So the way we need to dispel it is it needs to be more equitable. And it needs to be, um, you know what I'm saying? It needs to be in a fashion that's more accessible, particularly to low income minorities. And, and when we're talking about that within KP, I think it's important to talk about, I think it's important to talk about, once again, the intersectionality, how all, how there's not one like hegemonic uh, Philippine X experience, particularly Philippine X American experience, because that's kind of what we're primarily dealing with. Um, and how, how within our community, people are victimized and targeted at different rates, according to our different backgrounds, so yeah. Okay, thank you. For PA, uh, Philippine Awareness Week, you are responsible for coordinating and facilitating events with, the, with your POCOs. Traditionally, there has been daily workshops, and for PAD, there has been food and guest speakers. Do you have any ideas on how to accomplish organizing these events with your fellow POCOs? Can you repeat the question one more time? Yeah. What would actually very much help me is if you're able to just like send the question so I can visualize it. Okay, I can just yeah. write it out too. Thank you. And so once again, I think that uh, my background and positionality as an ADHD low income DACA recipient uh, who is a member of KP, Will also help inform. Will also help inform how uh, inclusive and equitable um, I will be um, if I am elected as political coordinator, as one of the political coordinators. Hmm. So good questions. Okay, I'll probably you're responsible for coordinating so seriously. There has been daily workshops and for pad there's been food and guests. Do you have any ideas on how to accomplish organizing these events with your fellow pogos? To be perfectly honest, um, yeah, to be perfectly honest, I spoke with the previous um, or the current um, social awareness coordinator, the social, social awareness coordinator, Jet, Jet, right? Yeah, I spoke with him. And he informed me that a lot of this, a lot of this job is learning while doing. And so, yes, I do have experience with organizing events similar to, uh, similar to PAW and PAD. Um, but as far as the semantics, as far as like the details and nitty gritty, I will, I will yes, be collaborating with my fellow POCOs who, um, to be honest, like w one thing I will, uh, I will say is this is my, like, like I, I did join KP, um, uh, pretty, uh, recently, like, um, what was it? Winter quarter. I joined winter quarter. Um, and, and like, uh, with the goal of like specifically, like people were telling me that I should maybe join like some of the other, uh, Philippine X orgs because specifically I wanted like political action, specifically like social and political action. So that's why I am interested in this position. And also, 
specifically for this question. Do you have any of your comments on Well, yeah, I mean, honestly, just how I approach end group work, like to be collaborative and like open minded, but then also to bring what you have to the table. So, yeah, that's how I would accomplish organizing those events. Yeah. Thank you. I'm writing out the next question cool. as we're speaking. Um, yeah, give me just one second. Also, I'm just gonna change my name. Let's do it. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, it is not allowing me, but actually, I, so I go by Alex, yeah. Okay, I can rename you. Alex Delion. Jane is my mother. <laughs> okay. So just so um, in case people are watching, they can hear it. Um, as social awareness coordinator, you are responsible for co-facilitating the Ethnic Studies 198 class with the other POCOs. Do you have a vision for the content in this class? And if so, how will you achieve it? Yes, I do have a vision. Um, I think that um, for this question specifically, um, my background, my experience comes very much in handy. Um, uh, so I'm from the Bay, I'm from Marin City. Uh, Marin City is like, just, just like this small like incorporated community in North Bay. And um, so I grew up there and um, once I got to community college, I decided to teach at the, at the school. Um, so it's like, so it's a K through eighth grade school. And I taught primarily fourth and fifth graders. And um, and obviously, like the demographics that I'll be teaching, like the age, the age specifically, the age is going to be different um, for the ethnic one ninety eight class compared to uh, my fourth and fifth graders. But um, but as anybody who has any teaching experience can tell you, like <laughs> you can imagine what the class is going to look like, and then you can actually hold the class. So I think that my experience as a teacher, um, specifically, specifically, this was a program that was, uh, it was for low income, primarily black and brown students. Um, and it was based on like an integrated reading curriculum uh, that was very culturally relevant. So I can take that same um, sort of, uh, what's it called, structure and like method uh, that I use at Freedom School, that's what the program is called, Freedom School, that I used at Freedom School when I was a teacher at Freedom School, for the ethnic 190 class, but obviously tweak it towards um, the age demographic and the, the different demographic, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But do you have a vision for the content in this class? Oh, the content, okay. Um, can you provide me with the name of the class again? Yeah, uh, it is called, hold on. If you wouldn't mind, like, uh, providing me with the name of the class and also, like, uh, uh, sorry, just, like, not doing the, um, what's it called, acronyms? Just yeah. because I'm less familiar with the structure of KB, so the acronyms. Okay. Okay. So for anyone watching, the actual name is Ethnic Studies 198 Contemporary Filipino Issues. Cool. Ethnic Studies 198 Contemporary Filipino Issues. Cool, yeah, I mean, for the content, I think I would very much talk about um, colorism, like Mestizo versus Moreno. And then, yes, and then I would also talk about, <laughs> yes, thank you, girl. Uh, what's it called? Um, what else we talk? Oh, 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 you know what I thought was very gl just grazed over by the entire Philippine American community was the Taal crisis. The Taal crisis when the volcano, you know what I'm saying? I mm -hmm. thought that was very glazed over and we did not do enough as Philippine Americans for that. So that is what I would also like to talk about. But then obviously, you know what happened is like coronavirus kind of superseded that. So, so yeah. Oh, well then, oh my gosh. <laughs> 
COVID-19, 100% I would have to talk about like coronavirus, COVID-19, and how the intersectionality of how like COVID-19, yes, how people like to say, this is a universal, this is, this is affecting all of us, but how it disproportionately affects some communities. And that includes, that very much includes the Philippine X American community. And the Philippine X, as we know, oh my gosh, like, Filipinos in the Philippines, it's very much disproportionately affecting them than it is us. So yeah, so I would have to talk about that. Oh, I would very much have to talk about, sorry, I would very much have to talk about American privilege, our privilege, you know what I'm saying? I would, that's something that we have to talk about. Cause I don't have, while I personally do not have the privilege of citizenship that many people in KP do have, I do have the privilege of legal status. And that is a privilege not provided for many Philippine ex Americans. They like are straight up undocumented. And that's something that we have to talk about because, because, oh my gosh, because like immigration has become so racialized in this country as like almost like just like a Latin X issue when it is not, when there when we know that there are so many undocumented Asian Americans, particularly Philippine ex Americans. So yeah, that would be also be something that I would talk about. Yeah. So privilege, I like privilege is definitely the, one of the biggest things. The differences in privilege, like, like yeah, so yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, let me write the next question out. So besides PAW, PAD, and political workshops, what other ideas do you have for political events and programming? Can you just remind me like what, what the acronym of PAW and yeah. PAD is in? So PAW is Pilipino Awareness Week. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Is Panay. It's Panay Appreciation Dinner, which has a, oh, a yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Um, besides pop and political workshop, yes. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, kind of like how, how I was saying earlier, just like holding more events. I, I think it's just very important, like, Oh, actually, one thing that I would like very much like to uh, bring to the table, like, because uh, specifically to this question, what other ideas for political events, is like the politicization of like the power of like Philippine X American rap. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, Bamboo. Do y'all know Bamboo? Bam okay, Bamboo is a, is a very famous like like Filipino American rapper, and and he is very like he was. Formerly a Marine, like he's very, like he very much like, he calls Filipino Americans out. Like he's like, he's like, take, take all of this beyond PCC, beyond your Filipino cultural like nights celebration of like the the very like superficial aspects of our culture. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's 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 not that's a that's a different critique. But you know what I'm saying. But um, go beyond that and actually take political action to give back to the community to give back to, you know what I'm saying? That's what, like a lot of his rap is about, Bamboo. And then also like, you know, you know the better known, like better known like within RA2, Ruby Abara. Do y'all know Ruby Abara? Oh yeah. Yeah, okay, Ruby Abara. Ruby Abara is also very like politically like vocal within her rap music. Like Ruby Abara is like, Ruby Abara is like, cause Ruby Abara is, um, she's from the East Bay, but like, like she's, she's an immigrant, she's from, Manila, like originally, and then immigrated to uh, East Bay, and then like with her mom, and yeah, and it's, and yes, and then their music is like it's really like like empowering and accessible to like specifically our our like community. So I think that um, yes, like like just showing like just spreading 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 that type of like political message in in such a like catchy way, you know what I'm saying? So something like that, and also just like the other um, uh, uh, the other like. Uh, workshops that I was saying that are similar to CCC. Okay, thank you. Okay, hold on, I'm writing out the next question.
So in light of our current political climate, what issues do you think are integral topics for KP to reflect on for the next school year? Current political climate. So are you referring to COVID-19? Uh, just any, anything like within the general context, like election of Trump or- uh, oh, okay, okay, so you're not referring COVID -19, to- COVID-19, like anything, yeah. Anything, okay, so in general, not specifically COVID-19, okay. Yeah. What issues do you think are integral topics for KP to reflect on for the next school year? I think, you know what, you know, you know what I think is really important because you brought up Trump is the idea of model minority. I think that one, like, one very important integral issue for KP, for the, for the Philippine X American community is, is the concept of, of the model minority and the concept of perpetuating that model minority myth and how detrimental that is to our community. Um, and so I think that's important. And then also like how many Philippine X Americans much of my family, myself included in the past, have perpetuated the mall minority myth and use that to like, I don't know, like leverage ourselves, but like, you know, shove out the rest of our community. That's sort of like that, yeah. So what issues do you think are internal topics? And then 100% COVID-19, like, yeah, it's like COVID-19 and how, oh my gosh, I was just reading that like, uh, uh, about the disproportionate um, like deaths when it comes to COVID-19, when it comes to like the treatment, like treatments, who's getting access to like, uh, to test kits, like who's getting access to, it's all, it's all of it, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, 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 and it's, you know, the, the, it's not surprising. What is surprising is, is how like, how badly like we're affected, how our demographic, but like, but like how, how black Americans are, uh, disproportionately affected by it, but also how I was also reading how like, like, uh, what's it called? Uh, what's the term again? Uh, Pacific Islander, Pacific Islander Americans, um, which includes the Philippines, um, are 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 dying. At, like like it, it was something like don't quote me, but it was it was at a rate like like much higher than um, white Americans. So yeah, so that would be important, and then also. Yeah, kind of just like the, the like, I, I also think what is, is very important, still important, that's been so important, like just constantly important, like throughout our history, is colorism. So Mestizo versus Morena. And how, um, how like, how the standards of beauty in the Philippines, it's white. It's like, it's like, we just, it's white, it's whiteness. And so, um, and that's, and that's because of a history of colonization. And so that's really important. And that's like, very important to, that's all I, I think so, yeah. Okay, thank you. So the question is, as part of the political pillar, what interpersonal values do you intend in, on upholding when collaborating with your fellow POCOs and general board members to ensure a well-balanced and effective organization environment? Okay, I also think that's a, a really good question because um, yes, so, th so this, the, the position is called political coordinator. So this is a, a, a politicized like position. And so, um, but obviously like, what is more important is the fact that we're all like, we're all a part of this group, we're all on the same side. And, and maybe like our politics will differ, but like, I'm not gonna let that like interfere with uh, me collaborating with my group, you know what I'm saying? I'm not so petty and like immature that I would let my own personal prejudices and uh, uh, political beliefs, like whatever they may be, um, affect the, the vibe and like environment of, of 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 uh, me with my fellow Pocos and then the general board like at large. 
So what, what interpersonal values? I mean, like just just like basic what they teach you in like elementary school, like treat others how you want to be treated. Like just like just just be kind to each other. You know what I'm saying? Don't assume the worst of people. Don't assume that people are like out to get you or trying to get ahead of you. Or and then like you know you know what they always say like at those at all these events like what is it like uh, safe space brave space uh, like take space yeah and then like, all of that yeah. Thank you. Oh, give give space, make space, take space. Something. Yeah. 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 yeah I get. I get what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The question is, do you practice self-care? If so, how? And how does this affect your capacity to be involved and engage in political spaces? Yeah, I definitely do practice self-care. Um, and I think that's something that like I've, I've developed in like my later years of life because I, did, I definitely used to not practice self-care and I would just go until like I ran out. And so, um, and I realized that, that that's not very productive. The most, if, you, if you're even thinking in terms of like, productivity which is like a very capitalist way to think of it but if you're thinking in terms of productivity you have to take care of yourself to be the most productive so um if so how how does this affect your capacity to be involved and engaged in political space yeah okay so so i mean uh in terms of practicing self-care well like i skate like i skateboard and that's like very like therapeutic to me and then um like i think just like hanging out with like my good friends is also very therapeutic and then like obviously my family, like I'm very close with my, I, I have a large, like it's a stereotype. I have seven siblings and I'm very close like with my, um, uh, with uh, most of my siblings. No, no, all, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very close with like all of my siblings. And um, what's it called? Uh, uh, yeah, and I think that like that sort of support system, I think that's the most important in my, um, in my self care practices uh uh it is having that support system is having like really good friends and like really good family that I, I know and trust and that like uh can like lift me when i'm feeling down as like cheesy as that sounds yeah okay thank you um so that's the last question and that concludes the interview thank you oh cool and yeah that's basically it so um yeah the our transcriptions of your answers and the recording of the interview will be posted on the Facebook page shortly. And um, the ballot will be released like soon after this. And then, yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, this is being posted on the Facebook page? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Real. This okay. is real. Okay, I'm just kidding. Okay, cool. <laughs> but yeah. So thank you for participating. Uh, thanks for coming out as well. Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you, Louis. Thank you, everybody. Okay, bye bye. Okay, bye.